All right. What's up, my brothers? We're live. Episode number 88 of the Before the Trainwreck series, the only show on the YouTubes that shows you how not to make a train wreck out of your life. Over the last few weeks, I've had a couple of interruptions from my regular um, series, which I've been using really to highlight some of the importance in some of the chapters of my book, The Unplugged Alpha, um, right here. I know many of you have read it. It's getting great reviews on Amazon. You can pick it up. It is available in Kindle and print. Um, if you can't find it in your location, I'm told bookdepository.com will ship for you. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can get it now. Um, I put a chapter in the book specifically on managing the male endocrine system as you age and why that's important. Um, so let's hop right into this broadcast today. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is um, the epidemic of low T in society today and why that is. If you haven't read Dr. Anthony Jay's book, uh, I think it's called Estro Generation. Let me grab it here. I have it on Audible. I listened to it. It's a great book. Um, currently listening to Ryan Stone's Fook Files, as Aaron Cleary would call it but we'll call it The Fuck Files because it's actually quite a good book. I'd recommend you guys check that out. Estrogen Generation by Anthony G. J. He's a doctor. The entire book is basically his life's work around uh, compounds that mimic estrogen in your body or contribute to uh, estrogen in your body while simultaneously lowering testosterone and causing problems in that sense. The subtitle of the book, I think, is um, why we're um, fat, sick, and infertile today. Um, most of you probably don't know this, but it's, it's quite difficult to measure testosterone levels unless you're using blood, but there are other ways that markers are left behind. Um, if you go to... Um, historical digs, and you look at the skeletal records of uh, jawbones specifically, because one of the things that happens when you have high T and healthy T levels is you have a strong masculine jawline. Um, and they've noticed that through throughout history, T levels, when they're measuring the skeletal remains of um, you know males, that testosterone has gone down quite a bit. They, they reckon it's somewhere about half what it used to be. So you know, as a healthy 40 something year old guy today, you've probably got half the testosterone levels of your great, 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 great grandfather, right? You know, for example, they were outside more, they moved around more, they ate more natural food that wasn't, um, you know, coated in uh, uh, pesticides like atrazine. Like that's one of the things that Dr. Anthony J talks about in his book is, is atrazine is a horrible pesticide. And it's used uh, liberally throughout the United States, believe it or not. It's not used in Canada and some, and I don't think in Europe for the most part, but it's it's still used quite a lot in the United States. And atrazine on um, produce, and it gets into the water system. Uh, it gets into stuff that, um, you know, cattle eats, obviously. And that mimics estrogen in the male body. Um, there's just no way around it. Another compound which he discovered, which um, wasn't around in your great, 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 great grandfather's time is something called oxybenzone. Uh, let me just read that there because these damn things are so... Oxybenzone, um, which is used in sunscreen. So when you're going out and buying your SPF, whatever, thinking that you're protecting yourself from the sun, you probably are. But the thing that makes it, see, because they always call it, uh, you know, 24-hour hydration and 80-minute water resistance. You can swim for miles and, you know, the stuff never comes off. It's very effective at blocking out the sun. But the problem with oxybenzone is it's estrogenic. So in the male body, it's estrogenic. It, it, it basically mimics estrogen and your body receives it as estrogen, which is why you see so many guys today walking around, you know, with female breast tissue. And very, very large midsections. Like there's there's an epidemic of obesity in North America. And again, that's why the subtitle of the book is this is why, you know, we are fat, sick, and infertile today. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Zub. Appreciate that. I might actually throw, um, oh, great. 
Robert Frank is in my chat. Hey, Rich, currently trying to get banned from Twitter. If it works, you've been a good follow. Thanks, brother. <laughs> um, yeah, Zub, uh, thanks for the super chat, 549. Appreciate that. Um, you guys are going to love this cast, so make sure you watch the whole thing because it is super important uh, to you. Um, so we've got atrazine, which uh, is a um, which is used in agriculture. Sorry, uh, we've got oxybenzone. I'm using words that I don't normally use in my normal vocabulary. I'm just trying to recall what it uh, was that Anthony J used in the book. So we've got oxybenzone, which is used in in sunscreens, all sunscreens, in fact, unless it's zinc based. So if you're going to use sunscreens, use zinc based sunscreens. I I titled this one uh, "Tongue in Cheek, Don't Be Soy" for a reason, so you guys can learn something. Um, but you know, there's some truth to it because soy is also a problem. He he spends a lot of time in the book uh, on soy and how that's estrogenic in the male body, and they use soy in a lot of um, foods as fillers. Um, I picked up a bag that um, was supposed to be natural, organic, healthy. Uh, homemade potato chips basically at this grocery store the other day, um, you know, the equivalent of like a Whole Foods. And I flip it over and I look at the back of it and it's got so soy protein in it um, as part of the uh, dusting, you know, for the flavoring. Uh, they put it in everything and you literally have to look at the packaging of everything that you pick up to see if they've thrown soy in it as a filler because that shit's not bad. For, like it's not good for you. Um, it's, it's fine if you're a chick. It's fine if you want high estrogen levels in your body. Uh, soy sauce is fine because it's fermented, uh, according to Dr. Anthony J. So that's totally fine if you're into sushi, which is a good thing because I do like sushi. Um, but you got to watch the labels of foods that you're eating. Atrazine as a, as a herbicide, again, stuff you put on your body, compounds, um, toiletries. So a lot of toiletries have, um, I can't remember the name of it in his book, but um, trust me when I when I say this. Actually, I'll grab the link because I got it over here. I'll get to those super chats in a sec, guys. Um, I got the link here from the interview. So I want you guys to just open this up in another uh, window if you're watching this on your desktop. If, if you're watching this later, just search on my channel, Playing to Win number 21, How Estrogenics Make You Fat, Sick, and Infertile with Dr. Anthony J. And I can't remember for the life of me what the uh, toiletry compound was. I'll put that there in the chat. But um, soaps, shampoos, Anything you put on your skin has this compound and you'll start to notice it because when you start to look at the ingredients list, it's got shit on it that you can't pronounce. And it's not one thing. It's going to be dozens of them. These are the ones that you want to keep off your body. And I laugh when, you know, guys are like, oh, Rich is a soap salesman and blah, 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 blah. Well, there's a reason why I like this product because I can actually pronounce the ingredients and there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on this one. That's it. It's, you know, it's a handmade pheromone infused soap that won't disrupt your endocrine system. I guarantee your cheap ass shampoo that you've picked up in the giant bulk container at uh, Costco or your, you know, 37,000 pack of soap of Irish spring. It's got all of that nonsense in it. You want to avoid that as much as possible. You put that crap on your body. It gets through you on your skin. You eat foods that contain soy, it's going to get into your system. And all of these things are going to make you estrogen dominant, which is going to destroy your testosterone levels. I'm going to talk more about how to boost testosterone levels and what TRT is all about and all this stuff. I'm going to get right into all of that. So just stay with me, guys. Hang tight. We're getting all the way there through. Let me just catch up with these super chats so I don't lose any of them. Um, hey, Rich, you're like the dad I never had. By the way, speaking of tea, what are your thoughts on overcoming addictions, spec porn addictions, and overcoming that? I don't know what spec is, porn addictions and overcoming that. I don't know, a little off topic. By the way, I'm from T.Dot. I'll put it to you this way, because I had a guy bring this up the other day in my community about uh, no fat. There isn't a single guy out there with sexual options that even considers no fat or you know having addictions to things like that. If you've got access to intimacy, and that can be with one woman, it can be with multiple women, it's entirely up to you, this isn't a problem. This is a problem for guys because they're not getting out there and interacting with people in the real, real world and dating women. They're too busy, you know, hammering them out. Um, so, you know, it's up to you on what you want to take as far as your priorities. Uh, opinions on keto diet to build muscle. Um, yeah, it. I mean, as far as diet goes, I'm pretty straightforward. 
eat meat, eat vegetable matter. Just just eat what my ancestors ate. Uh, I happen to know what my ancestors ate because I know where my ancestors are from. They're from broadly on my mom's side, the Mediterranean, specifically Italian. My my dad's side, Northwestern uh, European. So there's there's plenty of things in that diet, and th and that's what I tend to stick with. Um, if it comes out of a microwave, if it comes out of your freezer, and it's got packaging and plastic around it, and that's you know that's the other thing too. When you're wrapping foods up in plastic containers. It doesn't matter how much you know BPA-free labeling you put on it. Again, Dr. Anthony Jay has done all the research on this, and you can dig this up. But there will be estrogenics that move from the plastics into the food. Uh, you heat up food in plastic containers, not good. You want to use glass containers. It's, of course, a far better way to go. The guy goes really, really deep in the book. I, I strongly recommend you guys read Estrogeneration by Dr. Anthony Jay. He covers all of those in super detail. I'm, I'm going to spend some more time on it, though. Um, opinions with keto to build muscle. I think we're all caught up. Oh, hang on a second here. Classified chappy right now reading the book. Thanks for the info. You're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Do you take cold showers every day? No, not every day, but I do take cold showers. What I like to do is I like to start off warm and I'll finish off cold. Um, I'll just spend some time standing there in the, you know, the cold water. Um, I don't have a lot of body fat on me because of the lifestyle that I lead. I don't need to spend a lot of time in cold immersion. Um, some people really like it. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I just kind of do it so I can, you know, deal with my inner bitch, if you know what I mean, just so, you know, you deal with those things. All right. So uh, just go to my show notes over here. We've got uh, epidemic low testosterone. We talked about why that is. Um, so we talked about uh, atrazines as a pesticide. We talked about sunscreens, toiletries soy. Um, what was the other big one that he had out there? I think it was um, tied into water. That was it as well. Okay. So uh, birth control pills are consumed by hundreds of millions of women throughout the world. I mean, in North America alone, there, there, there's tens of millions upon millions of women on birth control. Um, there's of course, uh, IUDs and there's for the most part, I think the birth control is still the most popular one, but what ends up happening is when women urinate and then they go through the uh, septic system or, in, and through the, um, city lines and it goes to get treated and, and cleaned, um, you know, they can clean out material matter, you know, things that's in the water, toilet paper, crap, all that kind of stuff, you know, they can filter and clean all that out, but what they can't get out of the water is hormones. Uh, hormones are microscopic. They can't get hormones out of the water. So they go and filter and clean it and blah, blah, blah. And it comes back into their, comes back in everybody's houses. And all that pee that's gone out there that's got female hormones in it from birth control pills is ending back up in the water system and you're drinking it. Um, get yourself, I mean, if you can afford it, get yourself the best water filtration system you can put in your house. Uh, I've got a, a, a five stage reverse osmosis with some other fancy filter in it. Whatever it is that you can afford, put put that in your house so that it filters out uh, hormones out of the waters because they do end up in the toilet system. It just, it just happens. Um, learned so far that AZ a ingredient is bad too. I'm not sure if that's atrazine, but maybe. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, birth control pill. Those are the main ones that are really screwing with guys' testosterone levels. Um, there's a YouTube channel by uh, the title of More Plates, More Dates. Shout out to Derek. I've, I've watched a lot of his content, and uh, he's got some really good stuff on uh, bodybuilding and testosterone. And he's covered lately a bunch of younger guys that have very low T levels. In some, case, in some cases, it's induced by a medical condition. But there's a lot of guys that I've seen, and I mean, generally speaking, it's measured in nanograms per deciliter, deciliter or deciliter. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But um, a good level for a healthy guy is going to be between 20 to, the, let's say, between 20 to 35 should be somewhere between 500 and 700, 750. 750 would be a great number. A thousand is even better. But for the most part, there's a lot of dudes out there in their early 20s, and I've seen a lot of these uh, numbers because guys post in my community or they'll send me an email, you know, stuff like this, and they're low, like like they're in the hundreds or maybe 200s, and that's really, really low. It's it's not healthy. Um, it, it It's probably a function of lifestyle combination combined, poor sleep, poor diet, um, stuff that's, you know, they're putting on their body, uh, things that they're consuming, 
um, you know, drinking un, unfiltered water that's got hormones in it. There's all kinds of things that are getting in the way. Lack of exercise and movement. I mean, we live a sedentary lifestyle today. Like I spent the whole day today. I had call scheduled in the morning. I had a coaching session. I had another call in the afternoon with a Zoom session. And it's like four o'clock and I'm like, I haven't left the freaking house. I have not walked out of my house all day. I got a workout in because I got a home gym in my basement now. So I got that out of the way. Um, but even that is not enough movement. I mean, I'm making a, a point of going outside every day. I should do it more around noon so I get out in and around the sun. But I go outside every day so I get some fresh air and I'm breathing something that's clean, not this, you know, stuck in the house a whole freaking day. And even in my own house, guys, I go to like extreme lengths. Like I have plants in here. These things. Let me grab one. I've got three in this room alone. So this is a snake tongue plant and it cleans the air, right? It's the only plant that um, actually produces oxygen in the evening, which is when you want it. I mean, you want it when you're sleeping, but I go to extreme lengths, you know, like I am a very quiet biohacker when it comes to the choices that I make in my life. Some people, uh, you know, will point and sputter at that, but you know, haha, ha, I'm, I'm 47 and I'm, and I'm jacked and juicy as fuck, right? Um, so let's talk more about the importance of managing it. So the reason why this is important, and again, you know, I cover this in, in detail in my chapter, but I'm going to go over this a little bit more too. Women go through menopause, right? You probably know what it is. If you got a mother or a grandmother around at some point, they hit a wall, you know, they stop dropping eggs, their hormone panel changes completely. They have hot flashes, cold flashes. You know, you'll be driving with your mom or your grandmother in the car and they'll be like hot and cold and you're sweating and they're fucking freezing and it's a nightmare, right? That's what menopause is. It just kind of slams women and hits them overnight. Guys go through something called andropause, which is a much slower ride. Um, your testosterone levels are going to drop from about the age of 25 to 30, about 1% to 2% per year, every single year until you're dead, okay? So you don't really notice it. And there can be things that can accelerate it, like stress inducement, bad lifestyle, high, high cortisol levels, uh, crappy diet, you know, shit you're putting on your skin if you're out in the sun all the time and you're putting estrogenic compounds on it. All of those things can screw with your, with your hormone panel. Testosterone is the male hormone that makes you a man, okay? If you don't have healthy levels and you're estrogen dominant, you're going to take on feminized features. It's why you see... Here, let me pull it up real quick, see if I can throw it up on the screen here. Uh, do, do, do. I mean, you know, again, I, I did this tongue-in-cheek with the title. Um, these guys here, these dorks. I'm going to put this up on the screen. Boom. Share. Okay. When you see guys like this, hang on. I'm going to remove it. Share. Come on, application window, boom. Come on, StreamYard, work with me. There you go. These guys, you know, the soy face, usually with the light beard, with the mouth open. <laughs> you see this too much, you know, these these days. Um, it's it's problematic. These guys have low T. There was a, um, there was a, a test done. Who are these three guys? Uh, see if I can dig it up. And these guys had um, T levels of like 80 year old men and they were in their 20s. What was that test? It was like one of these, you know, um, vice guys. If somebody knows what it is, put it in the chat. Uh, I can't find it right now. But if you saw the picture of them, they were the, they were the epitome of the soy boy look, you know, the you know, with a big wide mouth and the crappy, you know, patchy beard and like no chisel to their face and like just bad facial features. You can also hear it in their voice when they talk. Um, one of the defining features of healthy testosterone levels is a deep masculine tone to the voice. I remember my granddad had a great voice. Um, yeah, that's it. Try guys on Vice. Maybe that was it. Thanks for that. Let me look that up real quick so I can show this to you. Do the Vice do it, guys? Hang on. Struggle, struggle to obtain medical, no, complicated relationship. I'm going to have to try to find it some other time. Somebody can find it and just put it in the chat. That would be helpful. Um, but all of these symptoms are obvious. I mean, I can tell when I talk to somebody on the phone. I can't, I don't have to see their face 
if it's a guy, if it's like a guy named Jeff and I'm talking to him and he sounds like a Jennifer or somewhere between a Jeff and a Jennifer, I know the dude's got low T and it shouldn't happen. Um, it's, it's, it's just a combination of all those things. And it's really, really important. I mean, um, one of the other problems that ends up happening is infertility, right? So if you're a guy, I mean, the whole point of you being on the planet is to scatter seed and you're not healthy and you don't have good sperm count. And you're not in a, in a position to attract the opposite, to accomplish what, you know, you're basically put here, but let me go here, uh, add the stream. Here you go. So you got optimal and low T and optimal. You got sharp mind. You've clarity of thinking. One of the things that a lot of people don't understand is when you've got healthy levels of testosterone and your endocrine systems firing on, on all cylinders, um, brain fog is, uh, very, very low. Like it's very limited. It doesn't, it doesn't get in the way you've got strong confidence. Um, you're of course always happy, happy, go lucky. You've got increased muscle math, uh, strong erections and libido functions, heart health. I mean, the heart's a muscle. One of the biggest, uh, misconceptions of, um, a lot of guys today when they hesitate to look at things like testosterone replacement therapy is, um, they end up looking at it and they go, oh, well, that's bad for your heart. Cause there's like one study done and there's like a guy that's 80 that had a heart attack when he was on TRT, but you don't see guys in their 20s having heart attacks. They don't have cardiovascular issues because they've got healthy testosterone levels. It's important for heart health because, again, it's a muscle to have that. You're going to have plenty of energy, strong bones. So one of the things that happens um, that, that you notice when you go on TRT and you start resuming a healthy level of testosterone is your bone de density improves. Uh, it usually takes about six to 10 months or so, but your, but your bone mineral density improves. You actually have healthier, stronger bones that are less prone to breaking when you've got strong testosterone levels. Low T, you look like this guy, you know, you're shaped like a pear. Low energy, increased fat tissue, you know, breast tissue up here, uh, increased risk of ED and low libido, increased risk of osteoporosis, which is bone issues. You're depressed. One of the um, big problems that that guys suffer with today is they'll end up complaining to their doctor that they're low energy, their mood sucks, they don't feel good. You know, they're 35, 36, 37 years old, something like that, and they feel depressed. And then what does a doctor do? They put them on SSRIs. They put them on antidepressants. Wrong move. You got the wrong doctor. Okay. These guys are in the business of prescribing crap that ain't good for you. Um, you're probably showing symptoms of low or lower testosterone than what you had years ago. And a TRT regimen would probably solve that. So all of these things are stuff that you've got to consider. Let me remove that. <clears throat> Do you fast? Hulse swears by it. I tried it. Unreal. So I met Elliot, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. We hung out for a few days, actually. Good guy. Um, yeah, he's he lost a lot of weight fasting. He was he was a big dude, and he got he got pretty ripped. You know, to be honest with you, he looked he looked pretty pretty solid. Um, I don't fast that often. Uh, I am going to be fasting more this year, though, uh, just to kind of see if I can tweak it. You know, with my diet, just so I can get rid of um, some of the belly fat that I have, and I don't have a lot. Like I'm like I'm still really really tight down down here and around the waist, um, but I just want to see what it's going to do. Um, so I think fasting is probably a great way to go, especially as you get older. I know that it improves your insulin resistance. Um, there's, there's a, a lot of other benefits along the way with testosterone production. It balances your endocrine system. It, it also gives your, um, you know, one of the things that somebody said to me once is if you're going to repair a roadway, you got to take the traffic off the road, fix it, and then put the traffic back on it. So if you've got issues with digestion, with your absorption, with all kinds of things in your intestines, fasting is not a bad practice for us. It's very, very beneficial to take the traffic off the road, you know, keep the food out of your system for a day, two, three days, you know, whatever it is that you're deciding to do, and then reintroduce it. It's always a great thing. <clears throat> What's your opinion on nightly drink or two to relax? Does it hurt tea levels? If you're talking about drink as an alcohol, yeah. So that's another thing that um, messes with your testosterone levels and increases estrogen, uh, beer, right? Um, I can't remember what the ingredient was. Anthony J mentioned in his books, it might be the hops. I can't remember what it is exactly, but beer is estrogenic in the male body. 
Again, walk into a bar and you take a look at guys, you know, I mean, bars aren't really open right now, but take a look at guys that, that swig back loads of beer and they've got female breast tissue, right? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very obvious thing, right? Um, let me remove this over here. Stop. Um, you know, there's a lot of arguments. Well, if you have a glass of red wine, it's not that bad for you, or it's good for your heart health or blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, so is exercise and moving more. It's probably better for you than that nonsense. Don't, don't try to complicate your life and justify why. Um, there's uh, pomegranate juice. I mean, if you want to drink something that's, you know, it's good for your heart health and good for your endocrine system, that's a nice little treat. It's not, it's not alcoholic, but it's, you know, it's a strong red drink. Um, I don't drink alcohol or if I do, it's very, very rare. It's not often that I'll drink it. I mean, like whenever you guys see me here drinking, uh, I got myself a uh, ginger tea right now. If you guys want to grab some merch, it's in the Teespring store. It's always there if you guys want to grab some mugs. Um, but yeah, I do, I do indulge from time to time in alcoholic beverages, but never beer. Um, very, very rarely. So. Let me come back over here to my show notes so I can stay on top of this here. So the importance, again, is relevant because as you get older, levels decline. 1% to 2% every year after the age of about 25 to 30. Keep that in mind. So one of the things, one of the resources that I dropped here for you guys, and I mentioned this in my book as well in some detail, but there's a, a company called Let's Get Checked, and I put it in the description and pinned in the top comment. I've worked with these guys before. I've used uh, their, their home testosterone tests uh, three times now over the last year, and I find it's very accurate for what it is. You're never going to get more accuracy than going to, um, like I use Life Labs here in Canada, and they basically do my blood draws every three and a half months. Uh, my doctor stays on top of my levels and, you know, he makes any adjustments that he needs to based on that. But, um, those are the, those are the most accurate ways to do it. And that's the way that you should be doing it when you're on TRT. If you're a younger guy, my recommendation is once a year, check your testosterone panel once a year, that's it. And keep those records, put it in a file folder, keep those records in your cabinet. And you'll start to notice that there's going to be a correlation between your levels and how you're feeling as you get older, and that will help you to decide: Am I going to am I going to go on testosterone replacement therapy to bring those levels back up? Um, just real quick, let me throw this up on the screen so you can see what this is. It's a very very easy uh, male hormone kit. Again, it's it's pinned in the top comment and in the description. There's a coupon code there um, at checkout. Um, you'll see it. I think it saves you twenty percent or something like that. But um, They've got a bunch of different panels. Um, if you want to get into the more detailed stuff, uh, like tracking your estrogen levels, estradiols, um, and there's actually an advanced one over here. How do I pull this over? Ah, I just screwed that up. Let's go back over here. Anyway, there's, uh, there's, there's four different panels. If you get somewhere around the $200 mark and, and you use a coupon code when you check out, you're going to save 20%. So you know, say 40 bucks on that roughly, it gives you everything that you need. Do that like once a year so that at least you know what's going on in your blood based on how you feel. Just make a quick journal entry too about how you felt that that year overall as far as your health. What I, what I would recommend you guys do is if you do that for a period of time and you start to realize these numbers are, are going down, which is going to be normal. I mean, they will go up and down slightly, but overall, over time, they will go down. Um, there's certain things that you can do to improve them. Obviously, I talk about that in my book as well in the chapter on managing your endocrine system. But when you realize that you get to the point that I've done everything that I possibly can to try to improve it, this isn't getting any better. Maybe I can look up a clinic and get some hormone replacement therapy. It's very safe. It's very effective. It's easy to do. Um, it's not scary. Needles are very easy. I spend way more time flossing my teeth than what I do on my TRT protocol. Um, and it's, it's something that you can mess with if you want to advance levels, you know, um, there's lots of other things that, you know, I can talk about there, but that's not what the show is about. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about managing the male endocrine system as you age and the importance of it. Cause if you want to be, I mean, I'm 47, I'm strong, I'm focused, I'm productive. Um, I'm not a fat bastard. You know, I get shit done. 
I think it's important if you want to live an optimized life to take this seriously. Some guys won't. Some guys will just point and sputter and ah, look at you, you know. Uh, but that's what that's what some guys want to do, and it's usually guys that are behaving that way in a female manner. It's because they've got high estrogen. Okay, so we've talked about uh, why it is the importance of it. Let's talk about how to increase it. Well, let's talk about what not to do before we talk about increasing it. Stop using shitty, cheap products, okay, that are designed to mess with your endocrine system. Stop using sunscreen that's not zinc-based. Anything with oxybenzone is what you want to stay away from. Stay away from cheap toiletries and soaps and shampoos. If you want to support the channel over my shoulder here, Tactical Soap is a great product, and it will not disrupt your endocrine system. Here, I'll throw that up on the bottom just as a little, little uh, push to that. But um, anything toiletry-wise that's on the cheaper side that has a load of ingredients that you can't pronounce, stay away from it. Um, Dr. Anthony J has on his website, his recommendations, and these are all of his Amazon links. So I'm going to send him some business here. Uh, Anthony J. There it is. So let me grab the list here and I'll throw it up on the screen so I can talk to you very specifically about all of them. <clears throat> uh, what I use, there it is. So share screen so all you have to do is just google search uh ajc uh sorry ajconsultingcompany.com or just search for anthony j dr anthony j and then over here on this tab he's got what i use so if you want to stay away from endocrine di disruptors um castile soap is very good it's uh it's a natural soap you can click through on his link it'll it'll take you to an amazon link for 60 pack uh you want to use uh, hand soap that's unscented that doesn't have any uh, phthalates. That was the word that I was looking for 20 minutes ago. Phthalates. He uses the word phthalates. Read the books all the time. These things disrupt your endocrine system. Also, it's uh, red number 43. So, if you guys are drinking any um, sports drinks like um, mineral or, or sorry, what do they call them? Vitamin waters or any of those other like uh, sports drinks where they have a red color. It's got a dye in it, which is called red number 40. And that dye is estrogenic in your body. Nobody tells guys, you know, these things. They're just like, oh, buy this because it looks like it's good for you or it's got vitamins in it or something. They don't tell you that it's going to mess with your endocrine system. This guy's done all the research. Pay attention to it. All right. So he's got the hand soaps in there, shampoos and conditioners. Again, you want to stay, of, stay away from things with parabens and phthalates or and artificial fragrances. All of these things are estrogenic in the male body. They're going to mess with your testosterone levels. Laundry detergents. I mean, if you really want to go like hardcore down the, you know, right down the rabbit hole and, and go absolutely like full retard on it, um, get laundry detergents that aren't going to like put these chemicals like phthalates and oxybenzones and all these sorts of, you know, preservatives into your bed sheets and the clothing that you're putting on your body. Uh, deodorants, another thing that he's got a link to over here. Diaper rash creams, uh, sunscreen. So I've used this sunscreen. It's, it's, it doesn't go on very easy. Like I clicked this link and I ordered it and I thought, okay, cool. You spray it on. It's going to be on, you know, great. It'll be just like this. I'll be honest with you. It's a pain in the ass. It is going to be more work for you guys to manage your endocrine system and to have a healthy, strong testosterone level than it is just to kind of go about it and, and do what society's always told you to, to do. Um, I always tell guys that I, that I crush, uh, comforting lies with the uncomfortable truth. And the uncomfortable truth is, for you to use a product like, like this, for example, it doesn't absorb into your skin. You're gonna look like Casper the ghost, right? I remember there's there's this one time, one of the first times that I used it, I was out on a uh, rally and I had the R8 and the top was down, it was hot as fuck out. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna spray some of the shit on my hands. I put it on my head. I'm like, okay guys, let's go. And everybody's laughing at me. And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys laughing at? They're like, you look like Casper the ghost. And I looked in the mirror of the car and yeah, sure enough, the stuff does not absorb greatly into your skin. So you've got to keep in mind, when you when you transition, like when you shift over and improve your lifestyle, s certain things are going to change that you're not used to. You're used to these things absorbing into your skin. You don't see them. Well, guess what? You want to be healthy. You want to have strong testosterone levels. You want to be able to reproduce and have healthy sperm and all that sort of stuff. You got to take this shit seriously. Um, you want to stay away from perfumes and colognes completely. Okay. A lot of guys will like spray all this shit all over their body and they think that, you know, women are going to throw themselves at them because they smell like, you know, like a bed of roses or whatever. 
Honestly, you don't need it. You really don't. Uh, he's got all the um, stuff for shaving creams, toothpaste, blankets, ink set, ink set repellents, water bottles. Don't use plastic water bottles. Either use steel or glass ones because uh, the plastics uh, do leak estrogenics into the water. Uh, da, 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 what else? Yeah, containers for storing food. Like this guy goes crazy right down everything. I'm not going to go down the entire list. Like I said, you can go look for it yourself. It's got it all in there. Let's go back here. Okay, so how to increase it. So now that you've removed things that are going to decrease it or become estrogenic in your body, pick up heavy shit, put it down, have a healthy diet, and get good sleep. Those are the main things. That's that's what our great, 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 great grandfathers did to have testosterone levels that were twice as high as what ours were naturally at the same age. They were They were always moving around, picking up heavy shit, putting it down. They ate natural food. Nothing with preservatives, okay? It's as simple as that. And they, you know, they slept well. They didn't have screens. I'm, I'm sitting here at 8.38 at night, Eastern Standard Time, looking at a screen, sending blue light at me. I've got blue light filters on my um, lenses. You, you know, they're coated with that. Uh, but, you know, you mess with your um, circadian rhythm. Uh, your body doesn't want to go to sleep if it's got blue light coming at it all night long. So shut off the lights, pick up a book. If you want to pick up a great book and read it before you go to bed, boom, right? Small shout out there. So those are those are the big things. Uh, make sure that when you're sleeping, you're getting good quality sleep. A lot of people ask me about this ring. Oh, Rich, did you get married? Uh, this is the hand you put the wedding ring on, by the way. This is an aura ring, okay? Um, real quick, let me see if I can get that on the camera if you can see it. Can you see those little bumps there? Uh, turn it that way. On the inside, right there. On the bottom, there's like a little circuit board and all that. Okay, that's those are three sensors that are constantly monitoring and collecting data. And, and what I do is I have this on airplane mode all day. And I put it in this little thing and it charges and then it syncs to my phone and it sends the data on my phone and it tells me how long I slept for, whether it was REM sleep, deep sleep, how many times I woke up in the light you know, middle of the night, which is probably when I stopped breathing because I was lying on my back or something like that. So it, it, it gives you a lot of data to help improve your sleep and certain things that you have in your diet that you can take out of your diet when you eat your last meal. I mean, if you're serious about living a better life as a guy's an optimized life, I'd suggest grabbing one of these aura rings. I don't have a coupon code. Um, they're not paying me to say this or anything like that, but uh, O-U-R-A, I, I like the product. It's you know, it's something that I've used for the last, uh, I think I started in June-ish or so. And it's been a pretty interesting uh, tool. Um, it's not the greatest for health tracking like workouts. Excuse me. Although it does do that because the problem is when you're grabbing bars, you know, this you know this thing's on the inside of your hand and you're grabbing bars and stuff like that. And sometimes it gets in the way. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. But it's a great sleep tracking tool. Sleep is more important than you think, right? That's when your testosterone levels are pumped. That's when you're pumping out your growth hormones. Um, you need to rest. You need to rest your body so that you can increase it. Those are the main things. And then there's other supplements that you can take. Um, I don't remember them all exactly. So let me go to the chapter in my book. I'll just tell you what the supplements are. Uh, master violence, why smart men avoid marriage. I did, I did videos on many of these own uh, topics too, by the way promiscuous primates. I got to cover that one still. Manage your F's endocrine system 103. <clears throat> so vitamin D3 is not a vitamin. It, like my endocrinologist basically calls it a hormone. Uh, I mean, a lot of guys are, are starting to recognize that vitamin D is not a vitamin. It's in fact a hormone that your body needs. And it plays a huge role in, in tons of uh, functions within your body. Um, the problem is, is that most people are vitamin D deficient. In fact, everybody that's, um, that's been tested that I've seen the reporting on for COVID has had low vitamin D levels. Uh, the government recommended levels, I think are like a thousand IUs a day, maybe like 800, depending on where you live, which is like preposterously low because I have to take 10,000 IU a day for my blood labs, and I've got a stack of them up there on my top shelf for my blood labs to show that I've got healthy vitamin D levels in my blood. Um, if you live north or south of the tropics, so the Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer, 
um, you're probably not getting enough vitamin D. If you're dark skin, like if you're black or if you're Indian and you live in Canada, for example, you definitely need to supplement with vitamin D. Even if you're Caucasian, you need to supplement, supplement with vitamin D. Like my, my genetic origin is, is again, Mediterranean, Northwestern European. I need 10,000 IU a day just to have healthy levels in my blood. That may not be what you need. Um, you should, you should, you should dose in accordance to what your blood labs say. If you're not sure or you don't want to pay for the expensive blood lab tests, you should be fine with four to 5,000. Um, another thing that you got to know is that if you're taking vitamin D, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create calcification in your arteries. You don't want that. You get calcification in your arteries. You're going to get uh, you know, heart issues. You're going to get blockages. Uh, if you want to have healthy sex life and you want your Johnson and your tool working properly, you don't want calcification in, in any of your blood vessels. So you have to take a vitamin K, more specifically the MK7 variant, um, along with, so, so for every 5,000 IU, you want to take 200 micrograms of vitamin K along with that, because that moves the calcium from your arteries into your bones, which is where you want it. Take this shit seriously. Uh, what are the other supplements here? Ah, EMF. That's another thing, actually. Let's talk about EMF in a second. So we got vitamin D. Uh, you want to reduce body fat. Body fat, okay. Uh, there's an enzyme in your body fat that is, um, which basically converts testosterone to estrogen. Uh, it's called a, a aromatization. Um, guys that are on heavy doses of testosterone bodybuilders, even some guys on, on TRT that have really high doses of, of TRT, take an AI, which is an aromatized inhibitor, which basically stops or reduces the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. The point of all of this is if you have body fat, especially belly fat, you have a lot more of that enzyme in your body because that's where it hangs out. So if you can reduce your belly fat, you're going to reduce your conversion of testosterone to estrogen, okay? It's going to keep you more masculine. So that's incredibly important. Don't be a fat bastard. Remove processed foods. I talked about the blue light part. You guys can read on that a little bit more yourself. And I think the last thing I'm going to cover is EMF. Uh, the other supplement you want to make sure that you've got in your system is definitely zinc and boron. Zinc is critical uh, with uh, testosterone production. It's probably the most important mineral. But A, B, C, E, uh, zinc, and boron are probably... Um, Zinc and boron will be the most important. And then electronic, sorry, EMF, so electronic magnetic fields. You want to reduce those. EMF, uh, cell phones produce EMF. Monitor, lights, my computer, this phone, my Wi-Fi router, the Bluetooth. All of this shit's bombarding our body. And that's one of the big reasons why we have this epidemic today. We live in large coastal cities. We're getting bombarded by EMF from every angle at all times. And it's very, very difficult to get away from it. Um, I've got my Wi-Fi on a timer. You can pick up a timer at Home Depot for like 10, 15 bucks. You plug your Wi-Fi router into it. It shuts down the Wi-Fi. I mean, if you want to be fastidious about this and, and, and take it seriously, that's just what you got to do. Um, so I have the Wi-Fi off at night and then it comes back on in the morning because I don't want, I don't need Wi-Fi signals going through my body while I'm trying to sleep, right? Um, another thing that a lot of people don't know is I don't have a cord here, but I'll just use a, well, we'll just use like a water hose as an example. So if you have a squirt gun or a, uh, a gun, you know, at the end of your water hose, that you used to water your plants and you've got the water hose on, there's no water coming out of the hose, right? It, it basically stops over there. That's the way that electricity works with your lamp at your bedside table. If you have a lamp at your bedside table or a clock or your phone sitting on, that's not an airplane airplane mode by your bedside table there's emf coming off the, the entire wire going up to your lamp all the way up to the bulb it's just that little knob that you turn that allows the electricity to go to the bulb to power it up that just brightens it up but there's emf coming off all of that too so when you start to look at all these like macro details and you make all these small tweaks along the way you can have a positive effect on managing your testosterone levels in your endocrine system again you want to be a man, you want to be strong and masculine, and you want to have, you know, strong focus and productivity, and you want to be looked upon by the opposite sex and admired for being a masculine man. You need to have healthy testosterone levels. There's no, there's no two ways about it. There is no soy boy out there with a T level of 100 that is having women throw themselves at him. It's, it's, it's always Chad. You know, there's a reason why Chad gets the girls, right? 
And last but not least, before we wrap up, let me just make sure I didn't uh, miss any of these super chats. I saw a few pop in. Uh, drinks. Oh, here we go. Just bought an aura ring a few days ago. Can't wait for it to get here because I've been struggling with sleep myself. Yeah. Um, take it seriously and make sure that you're sleeping in like a bat cave too. I know it sounds funny, but dark ass room, uh, a quiet, dark ass room. Sometimes something that makes white noise, like an air filter, um, you know, is fine. Or if you want to make like a little noise machine, some people buy those. Um, but you don't want to see your hand in front of your face. It, it, it should be as dark as possible. So put out, put up blackout curtains, make sure the doors are all closed. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just like all these little things you have to continue to do. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about TRT. So at some point you're going to come across a guy like me who's going to say TRT is a shit. And it is. I first heard about it. I think I was like 39 or 40 and I was at this conference and I ran into a buddy of mine that I hadn't seen for a couple of years, Tony, right? And we were, um, you know, the first time I met him, he was kind of fat, lethargic. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing well. You could see his body was inflamed. And, you know, then I see him a few years later and he looks different. You know, he looks he looks strong. He looks happy. He looks confident. He looks uh, thinner. Not, not thin, but he looked thinner. Like he lost a lot of fat and he looked a little bit more muscular. I'm like, what have you been up to, man? Like, you look pretty good. Like, you look like you're pretty happy with life and everything. He just smiled and looked at me. He goes, TRT, baby. I'm like, what, what's that? And he explained it. I'm like, okay, mental note, TRT, got it. I'm 39. And he was 44 or 5 at the time or something like that. So testosterone replacement therapy is pretty straightforward. It's not complicated. It's very easy. It's cheap. It's, it's, it's very effective. Um, it's not difficult to get for the most part, although some people struggle trying to find it because they, because they cheap out, right? They'll be like, well, they'll go to my family. I went to my family doctor and he checked my blood level and he said, everything's fine. Mm. Everything's fine within the government records because they want you soft and weak and soy. Okay. The government tables have continued to have been lowered year after year after year. It's like, if you put the basketball net so high, but nobody can dunk the ball, they start to lower the net so the kids can dunk the ball. It's what they've been doing with the government tables. It's why the vitamin D levels are only, you know, the government recommended levels are only a thousand IU per day, or they're saying, you know, well, you're within range. What, what range, like, like the range of being alive or being optimized. Okay. Because you can be alive at a testosterone level of hundred nanograms per deciliter, but you're not optimized. You're not, you're just not. So if you want to live an optimized life, you're going to have to pony up and find a hormone replacement therapy clinic. Uh, sometimes they're called anti-aging clinics. Sometimes they're called testosterone replacement clinics. Just Google where you live, okay? In the States, they're usually TRT clinics. In Canada, uh, you probably find they're called uh, anti-aging clinics or hormone replacement th uh, therapy clinics. And they have different cocktails, sorry, different cocktails for men versus women. Women use a completely different cocktail, uh, cocktail. And in fact, there's more women in my doctor's office whenever I go than there is men. So don't, don't be ashamed to do any of this stuff. Okay. Um, just look it up. You're going to go and want to book yourself an appointment. They charge you. Okay. I pay about $900 a year. I think the first year was like 1100 bucks. They charge you 900 bucks a year after that. Um, they do whatever they can to improve it naturally. And if they can't improve it naturally, then what they'll do is they'll script you testosterone, which you're going to get at some point. It's, you know, it's almost like a process of masturbation. They have to go through the process of trying to raise it naturally, which, I mean, I was 44 or 45 at the time when I first started. It's not going to happen. I'm never going to have levels like I had when I was 25. And what it feels like is it, is it feels amazing. Like, um, it's like, um, you know who uh, put it best? I think, uh, somebody said it's like going through puberty again. You know, like when you, when you go from a boy to manhood, there's obviously a spike in your testosterone levels. You got more focus, you're more aggressive, you know, you become bigger and stronger, you know, there's less body fat on you. Of course, become hairier too. Um, but all of those things happen and that's what, you know, puberty basically does to boys that makes them men. But as you've gone through time and your T levels are kind of, you know, slowly dropped off, you know, over the last 20, 25 years, because most guys start this in their um, 40s, sometimes 50s, sometimes even late, late 30s. Um, it's like a nice little boost, 
you know, you feel more focused, you feel more productive, your bones get stronger, your muscle mass is, is, is good and tone and you lose body fat and you feel good. Um, you'll also, I mean, I've heard other people say this other than myself, but I make more money now, right? I'm more focused and more productive. I get more shit done. I don't waste time on dumb stuff. Um, it's just a nice little thing to have. So, um, you can ask around about it. I cover, um, managing your endocrine system and, and TRT in my book. If there's any other questions, let me just see if I missed anything here. Any tips for navigating the VA system to get TRT? Look, even if you're paying out of your own pocket, it's not going to be more than $150, $250 a month. Okay. Guys spend $150, $250 a month sometimes on booze and cigarettes. Get rid of that bad habit and replace it with a better habit. Something that's like this. If you have insurance that will pay for it, um, use it. I don't, I don't have any tips for navigating, uh, you know, the VA system. Honestly, uh, here in Canada, we're supposed to have free healthcare. I'll tell you how free the healthcare is for guys. Whenever I get my blood labs checked, he, you know, he's checking all the panel levels, which means he's checking testosterone, estrogen, everything like that. Um, and the estrogen test is free, but the testosterone test costs you money for me to get TRT uh, treatment. It costs me money. Nothing, nothing that supports masculinity is free. Okay. That's what I've learned about the state and the government and how much they care about masculinity and men is if you want to be optimized and live an optimis, optimized life, it's going to cost you some money. So you're going to have to figure out if that's worth it to you or not. Um, there's probably things that you can get rid of. Kill, you know, kill your news cable, you know, stop, stop paying for that crap. Stop drinking booze and drink and, uh, you know, smoking cigarettes. Um, you can easily replace bad habits with something better like this. It's going to optimize. It's going to make you feel better. You're going to be, you know, you, everything improves. Okay. Everything improves. You're going to be better off in the bedroom, better off in the gym, better off in productivity and focus. You know, you're going to be healthier. Your heart health is going to improve all this stuff. I already talked about all that. I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it. I think I covered it all. Um, what are we at? We're at the hour mark. That was a good show. I think I covered about as much as I possibly can. There's some other things here that I wanted to drop in the uh, chat here. Let me just grab them. So I gave you the link for Dr. Anthony J. Um, here's a link for a video that I did on how to check your testosterone levels and some tips to boost it. Which includes let's get check. Let's get checked uh, box, which I've already mentioned. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. There's that. We talked about soy. Okay, I covered everything. I covered everything. Lots of value in this cast, guys. Um, leave a comment below. Smash the like button. And uh, if you're a channel member, I will look for any questions that you have uh, in the comments after the fact. I get sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands of comments on videos, and I don't have time to read them all. So what I do is I sort select by channel membership. You see that little join button there by the subscribe button? I can, I can organize uh, uh, comments now. So if you have a question, you can drop it in the comments if you're watching the replay, and I will look for it and uh, do my best to provide some feedback. All right. Thanks for watching the show. Grab my book, The Unplugged Alpha. It's available on Amazon. It's a great seller. Guys are loving it. There's lots of value in that. I talk about TRT and loads and loads of other stuff. Also, if you haven't gotten on my email list, how do I remove that? There we go. If you haven't gotten on my email list, that's also pinned in the top get on. Um, I'm going to be putting out a, uh, a lot of useful material on that. So I've got private videos that I've done for my community, for example, um, some of them on testosterone replacement therapy in greater detail and leaning into some of the more advanced stuff in there. You know, if you want to get into other treatments like DECA and, you know, stuff like that, but, um, peptides, you know, actually there was a question there about peptides. Sorry, I missed that one. What was that peptide question? VA, da, 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 insurance. <clears throat> How do I find it paying out of pocket? Uh, came in late. So there's somebody that asked about peptides. So ipamorlin, I think it was ipamorlin, right? There it is. Uh, I don't know about CJC1295, but ipamorlin, tesamorlin is more for fat loss and growth hormone. Um, there are like... There's nothing better than just straight up testosterone, cypionate, ethionate. doesn't matter what the ester is. There's nothing better than Big Daddy T, okay? You can try to use peptides, 
don't waste your money on testosterone boosting supplements that you get at the nutraceutical store. None of them work. None of them work. Some people think that they'll work and be like, oh, I got better boners and all that. Well, you're probably buying some cheap shit that came from China that has ground up Viagra in it and they're getting away fooling you. Um, they don't do anything. Healthy diet, sleep, lifting, making sure you've got zinc intake, boron intake. Those are the main minerals and more specifically vitamin D. Um, save your money. You don't need to buy any testosterone boosters. There's no peptides that boost testosterone. There's some peptides that like, like ipamorlin and tesamorlin, uh, which are good for fat burning. One of those will actually increase growth, growth hormone without suppressing your own body's production. Um, but get on my email list because I've got some premium videos that I'm going to start to release to my email list uh, exclusive to you guys. Um, so yeah, I'll be popping out some more premium content for you that, that way so you can get access to it. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching the show, guys. Comment below, smash the like button. Somebody that needs to see this, share it with them. And again, if you want to check your levels, uh, let's get checked, pinned in the description and top comment. I would recommend doing it from about the age of 30 onwards until you start realizing that there's a correlation between those numbers and how you're feeling and then start looking for a TRT clinic. And you know, you can, you guys can talk to me more about that later on at some other point. See you guys later. Peace out.